On this week's Red Dead 2 O'Clock, the new gameplay trailer analysed. How heists will fit into the story, and could we be returning to Mexico? It's all here on this special episode of Red Dead 2 O'Clock. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Red Dead 2 O'Clock. My name is James and I'm back this week joined by Dan to do a special trailer analysis. Hello, Dan. Good day to you. Uh, so, yeah, we should address last week uh, we were both away. I was on a holiday in, in Greece riding a horse, actually, getting in the Red Dead spirit what? of things. Yeah, I went riding a horse along the beach. And Dan was also engaged in other activities. So very kindly, Rachel and Tim stepped in to take up the reins as it were. Uh, Rachel, you would have heard in one of the previous episodes, Tim works with Rachel in the US. They've both seen the demo, uh, so they took charge of the episode that week. But this week we are back and we're going to do a trailer analysis, Dan. Yeah, gameplay trailer two. We've seen large parts of the game. Um, in a way, we're not seeing anything revelatory here, not on the top of it, but having played the game for a few hours and based on previous trailers, there's actually quite a few new details to pick up from this. Yeah, and there's a lot of things in here that you would have seen in the other trailers. There's basically the same four-ish key locations that are in all of the other trailers. And, helpfully for us, those are the four locations that we've seen and played. So let's get into the gameplay video and talk about some of the things we can see in each one of the scenes. Now it starts off, Dan, on this train with this guy picking up this bottle and smashing Arthur Morgan over the head with it. But we actually saw some crafting of bottles when we played it. Like, you can make them into Molotov cocktails and things. Yeah, it seems like you can combine, you know, bottles with, um, like, whether it's hides or animal hides or different materials you find when you're looting houses or other areas. But, yeah, crafting is a huge part of the game, which will extend all over your armoury and the things you can do. And the train that they're on here, we're assuming this is just the general train, or one of the trains that travels around the map. There was a train station that we saw in our gameplay demo, yeah. which Rockstar said to us has a real life timetable. So you'd have to go there at yeah. the right time to get on the train. This looks like it's just one of those trains that just happens to have a man on the back who's not happy with you being on his train. Yeah, it doesn't look like... We saw also a heist train, which has also been glimpsed in previous trailers and is seen later on in this trailer. This does look like the general passenger train, but the transitions are the same, where you go from the close melee combat to actually being, you know, traversing the train in real time. Now, this mission is one... I'm assuming it's a mission, one that we didn't see, but that in front of you there, I think we can assume is Abigail Roberts. She's part of your camp. She's very much part of your crew. And you're obviously on a mission with her here. I think once you get into the game itself, you'll probably be able to choose which one of your crew members you want to take with you, especially on key missions, if not a large majority of them. Yeah, this looks like this hints at some of the wider themes around, and we'll get to this, around heists and building a team for bank heists, which is very similar to GTA uh, GTA 5. And it will feed into, I guess, GTA Online or Red Dead Online when you start to build teams and crews. Mm -hmm. And if you note the mini-map in the bottom left there, there's a flashing red X on it, which actually shows you that one of your crew members is in trouble. And if we wind it on a bit, you can see there he is getting punched in hey, the face. My spot. And this guy, I think, is another one of your crew members called Charles Smith. Looks like you've got quite a few people with you on this one, so maybe it's quite a significant thing. Quick mention of the snow physics here. This, I'm going to guess, is up in the mountains where we first started our demo but it looks like Arthur Morgan's travelled back there with his horse for some reason uh, which you can do whenever you want in the open world yeah I mean I wax lyrical about the snow and uh, weather effects in our hands-on preview that you can wind back and watch it's also worth noting the animal on the back of the horse which you can you, know, you lit literally carry and hoist onto your horse now this clip here as we were mentioning at the beginning of the show is actually from one of the missions that we saw in the gameplay demo. This is the one that we saw at the end, Dan, and I think the one you were in control of when we went to find the O'Driscoll boys. That's right, and so after you've done all the shootout and done a sort of stealth becomes a shootout, you get to the final room you're supposed to open and break in and find something, but as you open the door, boom, big surprise. What leads on from there is the former one of their gang members, so you're not really sure if you can trust or not, he intervenes and shoots that guy dead, thus saving you. 
Yeah, that mission's called Paying a Social Call. Now this, I'm not sure, but I'm taking a wild guess that this is the oil field that we saw in the demo as well that you had a few encounters at and ended up having to run away because you kept getting shot in the face. Yes, this does look like the oil field or refinery area, which is quite near where I believe you start the game. When we went there, basically by entering, you are saying, I'm here for trouble. There didn't seem to be any way to de-escalate the situation when you get close, the guards get suspicious. It's all linked to uh, who look like the big bads in the game, or rather the big corporation in the game, which is the Cornwall Company. Moving on a bit, nice shot of a train there. Now this train here is a different train. This is one of the first missions that you'll get to play in the game. Not the very first one, because that's obviously taking place in Blackwater with the failed heist. But after you escape that, go up into the mountains. This is the section that we played. That train there is the one that you rob. And if we go forwards a little bit, you can see Bill Williamson there. Yeah, making a right old mess up of his detonation. Yeah, this is the one we played. So he tries to blow up the bridge, yeah. which will stop the train. It doesn't work. Then you have to go running off, jump across the train and pull the brakes yourself. You can actually link this little bit of footage to footage from a previous trailer where after you've got on the train and stopped it, there's actual footage in one of the previous trailers of the guy saying, this can go one or two ways, you know, before you let them out. It does make me think, only observation on that is, Rockstar maybe are packing their trailers with a lot of footage that looks quite disparate, but might actually be from quite early in the game. Yeah, I'd be surprised if we see something that's from really late on in any of these trailers, really. Bit of a bank robbery here. Now this is in the voiceover where they're explaining that Arthur can undertake a wide array of nefarious activities with his fellow gang members. Yeah. Some are large scale heists. Which might be a good opportunity to talk about the broader aspects of the game and how we think that moving around from location to location is going to actually work. Yeah, now it does look like the game begins on the back of a failed bank robbery stroke heist so you know the Vanderling gang are in retreat they're licking their wounds they have to make more money so uh, Dutch Vanderlyn addresses the troops and kind of has to go look we know it's gone bad that's where you see uh, John Marston who's injured mm -hmm. and licking his wounds and you see his son and his wife they almost don't want to do it but he's like look the money is non-negotiable we've got to do this train heist which is what we've just seen there now what it looks like is in each of the major sections of the game and as we talked about in our previous hands-on, the game seems to unlock using a fog of war system where it opens up new areas. And it's yeah. not that you can't go there, but in terms of the map, it's sort of saying this is your playground right now. So it looks like in each section, you'll be you know, setting up a camp outside of the town because you also know that you move your camp between areas in each section. It looks like you'll be setting up a camp, building up the camp, recruiting the right people to your cause. And it looks like building up to a major heist which probably kicks you into the next section now what's omnipresent through this and it talks about this in the first set of trailers you can feel the hand of the law and the growth of civilization chasing you down it's repeated through all of the trailers like this is the death of the old west so there is a sense of you being the last frontier frontiersman chasing the, you know, the time and the tides and this kind of thing so yeah i think you'll be not only chasing away from the police you'll also be worried about the indigenous gang of each section. Mm. So in each major bit, you have the omnipresent rival of the police and these new, you know, tough rival gang in each faction and section. It's something that we've seen in previous GTA games as well with gang warfares and different people owning different districts and things like that. Uh, how it's going to work in gameplay terms, I'd imagine, and I think we talked about this earlier, is once you've set up your base camp, you've gone away, you've done little side missions, you've started to progress the story eventually there'll come a point where they say hey wouldn't it be a good idea if we robbed this bank slash train slash yeah. whatever you get all your crew together you go and commit that big heist and by doing that you are then effectively you know chased away from that location by the law or whoever's chasing you you have to go to a new bit of the map and establish your base again maybe go to a bigger city do a bigger heist and it will build and build and build until well, you're very wanted, probably, yeah. around the, yeah. all of the states. And you're going for, like, you know, the big, the biggest job. Yeah, and it's worth noting that the game will broadly give everyone the same experience in that 
you will go from point A to point Z or whatever you want to call it. You know, no one's going to be locked out of a major part of the plot. But the way you colour in each section is going to be dramatically different in terms of the people you meet, the secrets you find, the way those things make your life easier or harder. So when people in life, actual life, swap stories about playing Red Dead, they're going to feel very different in terms of how th things went for you. But the broad sweep of the story is pretty, I think, pretty locked as far as we know. Yeah. OK, back to the trailer now. This looks like the first camp that we saw when we played the demo. This is one of the first camps that you establish just outside of Valentine. Uh, we talked about it's near that oil refinery as well. So it's all in a, a reasonably close space to each other. These ladies we didn't meet. Uh, no. They look like not part of your camp, but they have turned up there for some reason. And actually, it looks like from this that you take them into Valentine. Uh, they sing a lovely song, which is this. Which looks like the songs that other people will be singing relate to actual real places in the game. So you might be able to pick up some little clues to other things yeah. by just listening to people. And you can see the yellow waypoint marker on the map once Arthur Morgan says, yes, I'll take you to Valentine, that points them in the right direction. It, to it's Valentine. also showing, and this, this gameplay trailer is really about uh, missions, you know, including the uh, Dead Eye system that we'll get to. But it's showing you that not every mission is a blazing shootout. There will be some escort missions, some stuff is a bit more fun. Yeah, and talking about that, lots of other things to do. So it says in the voice service as well, when you want, you can rob a train. If you're up to it, you can rob a carriage. Uh, you can even go and rob a shop, which is what we did actually when we played it. I say we, I did. Uh, yeah. Tried to hold, hold the man up. He got a bit angry. Surprisingly. And then yeah. the entire town descended on me. I didn't go well, that one. Um, I really struggled to see a scenario of robbing the shop's a good idea. Like it's a massive short-term win, but the guy remembers you people shoot you out of town but what you can do and this is repeating what we've said throughout you go to the sheriff and you or, you, or the train station post office wasn't it and you buy the bounty that's been put on your head yeah so you can kind of neutralize the immediate shooty threat but the shopkeeper will either make comments or just simply refuse to see you i think they they remember so yeah. you don't want to make too many enemies. It will make your experience much harder. Yeah, and who knows? Like It could even make the things in that shop more expensive for you because you know yeah. he doesn't like you anymore. So it's, yeah. like, it's going to cost you another... No, that would be... And that's, that's, I mean, that, as far as I'm aware, that's speculation, but interesting speculation. It is. It it's speculation sense. indeed. No, no, no. But I, I think that would make sense. And it's really a nice way for the game to punish you without ruining the experience. Yeah. Uh, and also on the counter there, we've mentioned this before, but you can see... The book that you get in the special collector's edition, which is also part of the game, it's called Wheeler, Rawson and Co. Catalog, and it's basically a catalog of everything in the shop. If they don't have it in the shop, he'll like order it in for you, as it were, uh, and you can buy it through the catalog. Mm. Um, but it's also a way that you can track everything that you're collecting in the game as well. Yeah, it's uh, really like cleverly Plants done. and animals and guns and ammo and all of that kind of stuff. Here, I think it's worth mentioning just the incredible vista that you can see um everything you can see you can go to was one of the things we got told when we were playing it like you saw a vista it was like this but we were down in the valley and we could see the mountains and and rockstar said yeah if you want to go up those mountains it'll take you a long time but you can ride up there arthur morgan smoking here which was something that we found out was related to yeah. dead eye yeah so different like, yeah, I, I thought it was just cool that you could smoke, so we did have a little smoke. Now, I will add, you don't smoke for very long, as far as I remember. Maybe we accidentally extinguished it. You basically lit it up and went... <laughs> yeah, that'll do. And that was it. So that was. I looked a little bit silly, but the idea of smoking is that you, you're sort of like trading off. So you might lose a little bit of health, but you'll charge up your dead eye meter. So I think throughout the game, you know, alcohol, tobacco, these different things have uh, push and pull. As we carry on through the trailer, we get to see some of the different gangs. Now, the main ones that we saw in the demo were the O'Driscolls. We talked about them a lot. That's the one that we went on the mission for. But it looks like they're going to have different outfits and definitely different styles for you to be able to easily identify which kind of gang they're in. Mm. We didn't see any of these guys, but, I mean, from their outfits, they look like they could be some kind of Mexican gang. Yeah. Now, we haven't seen any of Mexico yet. Nope. We did see some of Mexico in the Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Does this hint towards Mexico is in the game? Could we be going back to Mexico? 
pure speculation, but I mean, they've got giant Mexican hats on. It's difficult to say because, I, as I said, I do think Rockstar are holding quite a bit back deliberately. Mexico was in the last game, which is technically ahead of this one, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. It seems it would be surprising to me were they not to show you it again in a much greater resolution. I don't know that, but we do. We have seen a little glimpse of like other bigger things in the game, and I think this is a game that will keep surprising me. When you do commit a crime in the game, you can do them unnoticed, which we did manage to do a few times. Uh, but what we're seeing here, when you've got that wanted flashing and an unknown suspect, what that means is the lawmen have found something that you've done, probably a body in the middle of the street or in the middle of the forest, yeah. and then they start investigating it. So they know that something has gone bad, but they don't know who's done it. So what they're hunting for here is the unknown suspect is you. So as long as you're like, you know, I mean, he's got a gun out there, but as long as you're not there careering around, shooting everyone, you're most likely going to be getting away with things if you hide the bodies and you're a bit stealthy about that kind of stuff. You can stealth it out. The wanted bar system does work actually incredibly transparently like GTA V. This, it's similar or analogous to the witness system where I think we killed a few old farts lying out on the road and we got spotted by passers-by. You're not even immediately sure who has seen you. You just suddenly see the witness thing pop mm. up. Now, you have to chase them down to kind of like threaten, and we'll see this in a minute, you, see, you threaten or uh, basically kill the witness. But with the wanted bar, you have to escape the radius and the yeah. further away you get from the scene of the crime, the wanted bar physically starts to decrease. We're back in Valentine now, and I think this is the sheriff's office, which we also visited in the game where you can go and pick up bounties. Uh, the sheriff actually says... Well, no, you don't hire a saint to catch a sinner. Uh, this is actually a bit later on in the trailer. We see which mission he's talking about, and it's the one that you did, I think, with Benedict Albright when you went and he was selling uh, elixirs and you had oh, to snake oil, trick man. him. Yes, it's yeah. that guy. Now, moving on, this is actually one of the new locations in the trailer. We haven't seen this before. This is what I think it says on the sign. Grey Dooley Mill? That's right, yes. I think it says that. Um, we haven't seen it before. Not quite sure where it is. It's got a doctor, that little hut on the left there. It's got a, a doctor in residence. It looks like a reasonably big town from the mini-map. There's quite a few buildings there, but definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, this next bit is all about explaining Deadeye. Now, this is quite brutal. If you look really closely when he fires this shot off at the carriage and it explodes, the horse at the back left, his leg comes no. off. <laughs> like you can see loads of blood, and then he's only got three legs afterwards. Oh, wow. Well, that's explosions for you. They're not good. No, uh, and I think this applies to people as well. Like There are certain instances where things will get dismembered. Uh, but here's an, an instance of it happening on a, on a poor horse. Now, the Dead Eye system generally is pretty straightforward. It's, it'll be familiar to those who played the previous games. When we played it in the demo, Rockstar were generous and gave us a very large bar. So I think I've probably got a false impression of how easy it is. I think we had essentially a maxed out bar, which was like three or four levels in. But even on the basic level, you have got enough time to definitely you know slow motion target someone i wasn't probably fully aware of how long it would take to recharge without the system so it's quite nice if you want to put 17 shots in one man's arm just for maximum effect so moving on from dead eye this is we're back in valentine again now i think this is quite significant as a shot because it looks like you're definitely robbing this place it also looks like that this is a cutscene, and if i had to put my speculation hat on i'd say this is probably from the first of the heists that you're going to do. Valentine seems like quite a big feature of the early yeah. game. It's been in a lot of the trailers and everything. It's the place that we went to the most in the demo. It would make sense that that becomes the first little training ground where you do your first little heist, and I think this is probably a shot from it. Yeah, it makes sense to me. You can see over the road the saloon, where when we visited that in our hands-on demo, they remembered us getting in trouble earlier in the game and actually, if you refer to one of the previous trailers, they actually show you being thrown out of the window, referring to the moment that we'd seen in our hands-on. Yeah, that's the trouble that, that we had caused, which is why the saloon was shut. Indeed. Um, but then, as we played the demo and did some sleeping and went around a bit, you can advance the time and the saloon then gradually opens again and you can go back. And that's when he remembers and says, hey, no more trouble from you, please. Yeah. 
This is another shot of a new place. This is most likely, if you match the screenshots and the things that have been released, I think St. Denis, one of the huge cities in the game. Are we talking what's the equivalent of the New Orleans area here? Yes. Yeah. This uh, does look big. Yeah, we can't see much of it. Uh, Arthur Morgan there goes and helps out this beggar. But you can see the streets are much more established made of stone for a start rather than wood or most of the ones in Valentine and there's a lot more of a, a sense of a city and hustle and bustle to it yeah here just a quick note the horse's tack is a nice uh, fancy green and red that is part of the customizable options that you can give to your animals uh, and he's carrying some some of kills on his back as well and we won't go fully into it uh, this bath scene uh, you can tap x to scrub yourself but you can also in certain establishments get help within your bath we've that talked about it on a previous correct. show you might want to check out our previous hand well it, it was our hands-on show but it wasn't our hands that were on in that particular occasion so yeah if you want more details on that skip back a few episodes another thing that we also talked about briefly in those episodes was how dirty you can get and now here's a shot of arthur morgan being covered in mud uh, and that's something that you will have to go and clean yourself and your horse and your equipment. Mm. And actually, it will change the way people react to you. Yeah, I was quite insistent on James acting like a dandy and keeping fine sort of pinstripe banker's clothes and pomading his moustache, which is all completely possible. And now we're moving into a, basically a showcase of what kind of side activities and mini games that are going to be in the game. Yep. Here we've got cattle herding, fishing, blackjack. A note on blackjack. He gets 11 here in Blackjack. Definitely should take another card because there's no way you can lose. <laughs> you can go and chop wood for the camp, dance, drink, play dominoes, play that knife finger game. You know, when you put your hand yeah. on the table and then you, you stab the knife into it. That you seem to be able to do for money and have a bet with someone about who can do it the most. You get five attempts here. And this one, uh, Arthur messes up and stabs himself in the finger. But it looks like you can have five attempts they're playing for, I think, 20 cents. Yeah. So, big money game. Well, actually, and we joke, 20 cents in Red Dead is not nothing. No. Like, we were staggered, you know, to get uh, huge wanted levels of like $200, which they, you know, was described by Rockstar as huge. So, a few dollars in these times was quite a bit of coin. Now, this section, they start talking about secrets and lots of other things to discover in the game. You can see that question mark on the mini map in the bottom left is the same one that we got when we went to visit the paleontologist lady yes which indicates like stranger missions that you'll be familiar with if you've played gta games yeah these two definitely look like convicts who have broken out of a prison just a bit um whether that's just like the sheriff's office or it's a bigger prison i think we've seen a prison on the leaked map we haven't been to see it ourselves yeah but it would imply that there is a bigger prison at play here in in red dead 2 that you could probably go and visit yeah, and that would be fascinating in terms of maybe even extracting an asset, such as someone to help you from prison for one of your big heists. Definitely something we've done in GTA as well, so yeah. the formula is there. Here we get to see some more of the subtler side activities, more peaceful things. You can go and see a show. While seeing the show, you can cheer or antagonise the performers with using your button prompts. I'm only going to antagonise should Rockstar have found a way to reintroduce Ricky Gervais into their games. <laughs> Do you remember when you had to go and see him or when yeah. the GTAs perform live on stage? In Times Square or something. That would be totally hilarious. I, I doubt they've done that. I, I do wonder if they've done something cute and shoehorned a modern day star into an olden day style. That would be pure speculation on my part. I don't know that. We're getting to the end of the, the main bit of the trailer here. We can see... This is the bounty that you picked up, the one in Valentine with Benedict Albright that we talked about earlier. $50 for bringing him back alive. Mm. They are very specific about bringing him back alive. There's been no killing in this one, which you managed to do despite nearly drowning him in the river. Yeah, but I just took a lasso around his head at the end, but he's basically fine. And again, you can hear more about that in our gameplay hands-on, but there was a really nice sort of riverside chase to get him. Quick mention of this. This is one of the kill cams that we've mentioned before in one of our previous episodes. Yeah. You get a really good shot off. Occasionally, you'll get one of these really stylized kill cams that will change depending on if you're playing really good or really bad. Yes. You get different types of kill shots. And the rest of the trailer highlights the first person camera and the cinematic camera, both of which we've talked about before. The cinematic camera is activated by holding down the touchpad. And then if you hold X, your horse will follow the trail or the route that you've set. And I think circle changes the different 
camera angles so you can you know frame yourself up some nice mountains and things like that yeah and finally the final shot of this trailer just a little nice touch is actually the front cover pose of the first game huh, that's nice. exactly the same mirroring the two things together and that is basically the end of our quick trailer analysis we will be back on friday for the normal show at 2 p.m uk time me and dan will try and come back along for that give you a bit more insight into this trailer pick out any of the other things that we pick out along the way and there is loads to talk about because we weren't here for the last week rockstar have updated their website with loads and loads of images that we can go through loads of stuff about the animals and at some point in the next three weeks we're probably going to see a trailer for the online mode which we haven't heard that much about yet as i say we'll be back on friday at 2 p.m uk so we'll see you there (laughs) 